Hey, this is lecture 31. I'm going to be talking about the continuous time Markov chain transition function and transition rates. Okay, so just remind you what we've already talked about in week one. We talked about the differences between a discrete time Markov chain and a continuous time Markov chain. So if you have a discrete time Markov chain, it's, it's pretty much exactly like it sounds like. It has discrete time in it increments. So it remains in any, in any state exactly one unit of time before making a transition or a change of state. If you have a continuous time Markov chain, it relaxes, relaxes this restriction. Um, and so now what happens is you can set, spend a continuous amount of time in a particular state and then it transitions to another state. So here the time is what's continuous in one and not continuous in another one. But both still satisfy the Markov property. So both are still independent of the past and basically are still memoryless. Okay, so let me give you an example of a discrete time Markov chain and how you can actually take the model and you can kind of make it a continuous time Markov chain. Okay, so let's think about uh, winter days in Minnesota. Um, so if you are talking to somebody who lives in Minnesota, they might think it snows like all the time. So, um, so Minnesota's view of winter might be described um, so that it transitions from rain, snow, and clear in this way. So here on a given day, if it's raining here, probability that it's going to rain is going to be 0.2. Probability that if it's raining one day, then the probability that it's going to snow the next day would be 0.6. And if it's raining one day, the probability it's going to be clear is going to be 0.2, etc. So here if you have, if it's snowing, it has a probability of 0.8 of still snowing, whereas it has a 0.1 probability of either having rain or being clear. And same thing is true here for clear. So for this model, regardless of what the weather is today, there's always a 60% chance that it's going to snow tomorrow. <coughs> so let me just be clear. This isn't what it actually happens in Minnesota. This is just an example of how a person that lives in Minnesota might view um, what happens with the weather. So here the time increment is a day. Um, if we have a certain weather today, like rain, snow, or it's clear today, what will it be like tomorrow? Okay, so now let's think about how to actually make um, the same sort of scenario, but now talk about it being continuous time Markov chain. Okay, so we're thinking about a continuous extension of the model. Here we're adding time in. So it's not that it's just going to rain one day, snow the next, be clear the next, or snow this day and snow the entire next day. So if it rains, you expect on average rainfall to last a certain amount of time. You expect snow to last a certain amount of time. You expect it to be clear a certain amount of time. So here we're going to add a continuous extension by supposing that rainfall lasts on average three hours at a time in the winter. If it snows, normally on average, let's say it lasts six hours, and if it's clear, then you normally have about a 12-hour window of it being clear. So we can also assume that we're going to change from one state to the next. So now this is strictly changing states, right? So if you think about, let me go back here with our continuous, I mean, our discrete time Markov chain, we had we had the probability of it raining one day going to the probability of it raining the next day. So here we're thinking only about changing the state. So we have a, we're not talking about going from rain to rain. That's a zero probability because that's not changing what the weather, that's not changing what's happening. We're going to say on average, if it's raining, it's going to continue raining for three hours. Um, so we're only considering what's the probability that if it's raining now that when it does change states that it is going to start snowing or be clear. Um, and so similarly if it's snowing now what's the probability that once something else happens that it's going to change over to rain or it's going to be clear. Okay so suppose it's currently snowing so here we're currently snowing then what this um, model shows is that for some exponential length of time, and here this lambda s is 1 6 is because here we're talking about the average duration is 6 hours. And so your parameter that you have for your exponential distribution is going to be 1 over 6. 
So we have uh, um, for our, an exponential length of time with parameter lambda s is 1 6. Then the weather changes to rain with probability of 3 fourths and it changes to clear with probability of 1 fourth. And again, these add up to 1. If it switches to rain and it stays raining, so let's say I go from snow to rain, then on average, how long is it going to rain? Well, it's going to rain for three hours, or it's going to rain according to an exponential distribution with parameter 1 over 3. So this is my average amount of time that it's going to rain, so my parameter is 1 over that number. So, and then the weather changes to snow or clear with an equal probability. Okay, so this is um, an example of maybe what one realization could look like. So here what you have is across time, and so what we have is it's snowing, and then we keep snowing for a certain period of time, and then it changes to rain. It only stays rain for a little period of time, then it goes back to snow again, then it goes to clear. And remember, you notice that this period of snow and this period of snow are different lengths of time, as well as this period of snow. So here's a longer period of snow. Here's a really short period of snow, right? Is that okay? Well, that's perfectly okay because it says on average the snow is gonna it's gonna snow for six hours. Could it last longer? Could it last a short amount of time? Yes, because we're talking about it having an exponential distribution with parameter lambda s is 1 over 6. So the amount of time that it continues on average, if I look at a long period of time, on average it's going to be 6 hours. But at any single one time, it could be less or it could be more. So like here, on average, um, it stays clear for about 12 hours, but it could be shorter and it could be longer. So um, this is an example of how it could go from one state to another state. And so notice here, if it's snowing, then it seems like it, it has more chance of turning to rain, um, going from snow to rain, than it does going from snow to clear. That's because of that probability transition matrix. So the likelihood of changing from snow to rain is 0.75, whereas changing from snow to clear is only 0.25. So there's um, three times more likely to, to change from snow to rain than it is to change from snow to clear. Okay, so here if x of t denotes the weather at any time, then we say that this is a continuous time Markov chain. And the matrix P gives the probability of moving from one state to another in a discretized process in which time has been ignored. Um, and we also have that the amount of time it's going to stay um, follows an exponential distribution with these parameters lambda r, lambda s, and lambda c, like we discussed on the previous slide. Okay, so for t greater than or equals zero, the transition probabilities p, j, i of t is exactly what we had talked about previously. So what this is is the probability that if I'm in some state initially, so state I initially, then after some time t, I'm going to be in state j. So that's what this stands for. So remember, we don't have to think about t plus s and xs. Um, so here we think about if I'm any state in any state I, then after t, after t time, t units of time, um, then I'm in state j. So this is, describes that probability. So this is um, arranged in some matrix, P of t, just like we had our probability transition matrix before. This is called the transition function. So here, if I go back to our example with our snow, then this P is not our transition function. This does not have anything to do with time in it. It has not, no time increments whatsoever. This is just, what is the probability I'm going to go from rain to snow? from rain to clear. So it has nothing to do with how long am I going to stay there. So here that P that we were given is not um, a transition function because it doesn't take account into account time. 
But one thing that is true about transition functions is it satisfies this Chapman um, Kamora equation. So here you have p of s plus t is equal to p of s times p of t for all s and t. So um, for example, the transition function for the Poisson process. So remember with the Poisson process, we can go from state 0 to state 1. So remember that was our counting process. So here I'm thinking about the number of arrivals. So the number of arrivals, so if I'm in, if I start at state 0, then the probability that um, I'm going to still be in state 0, um, so this takes into account the probability that I'm still in state 0 after a certain amount of time. So here I have e to the negative lambda t. And then, so this is, um, remember this is um, according to our Poisson distribution. So remember the Poisson process satisfies the Poisson distribution. So this is different than what happens at a single increment of time. So here if I look at, think about P of delta t, remember the probability of going from 0 to 0 is 1 minus lambda delta t. The probability of going from 0 to 1 is lambda delta t. So here, this is just p of delta t. So probability I'm going to go from one to the other. This is if I start in, if I start in state at state zero, then where will I be in ten in t increments of time? So this is this Poisson process. So this is this um, if t if our n is equal to one here. Here, this is if our n is equal to 2. And again, if I started in 1, then this is going to be our n equal to 0, basically. Our n equal 1, n equal 2, etc., etc. Okay, so let's talk about the holding times. So for each i, we're going to let qi be the parameter of our exponential distribution that describes our holding time. So basically what we're going to think about is we're going to think about um, if I'm in state i, the process is going to stay in state i on an average of 1 over qi time units. So qi is the rate at which I'm changing from one state to another state. So I'm saying I'm going to stay in state i average of 1 over qi time um, units before moving to a new state. So here in general we assume qi is, is between 0 and infinity. Technically, we can say qi is equal to zero or qi is equal to plus infinity. So when we say qi is zero, so basically that means that um, if I'm in state i and qi is zero, that's a, then we're saying that the process is actually never going to leave. So I'm going to stay in there an average of one over zero, or I can think of infinity amount of time before I'm moving to, to a new state. So if I'm staying in there an infinity amount of time, I'm staying in that state forever. So we're calling that absorbing state. QI equals plus infinity. And basically, you can think of as soon as I get in, I leave. So remember the limit of 1 over QI as QI goes to infinity, this would be 0. So on average, it stays in there 0 time units before moving on. So this is what we call explosive. So if qi is equal to zero, basically means that I'm staying on average infinitely long. If qi is equal to plus infinity, it means I'm basically leaving immediately once I get there, and so it's called explosive. So in general, we assume that qi is between zero and infinity because we're assuming it. it's not going to stay in there um, the entire time, and it's not going to immediately leave. Okay, so let's talk about the evolution of continuous time Markov chain. We can think about how it changes from state 1 to state 2, etc. So if I start in state i, then basically I'm going to stay in state i for some time, some average time. And so here we, if qi is that um, parameter for state i, then I stay on average 1 over qi time units. Then remember we think about our alarm clock going off. And so our alarm clock goes off, we go to some new state. We go to the new state with probability given by pji. We stay in the new state j for some period of time. On average, it's 1 over qj time units. Then we go to a new state, let's say state k. 
and with probability pkj, so this, remember this is the probability of going from state j to state k, and then I stay there, and so on and so on. So we can think about um, the transition probabilities describing a discrete time from state to state. So if we ignore the time, if we just think about where it's going to transition to, then we see a sequence y0, y1, dot, 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 all the way up to yn, um, where the end state, where yn is the end state visited by the continuous process. So we're just looking at where does it go? Where does our states go? So if I can go from state i to state j, but I can't go to state k, so it says where is it possible that I can go? This is actually called an embedded chain. So we're kind of we're ignoring that time probability. So we let T be the transition matrix for this embedded chain. So um, it's the probability that we're going to go from state I to state J. And T is the stochastic matrix whose diagonal entries are zero, just like we saw in our snow, rain, clear example. So we have a stochastic um, matrix where we're assuming basically that we're going to switch from one state to another state. So where can we go? So for a Poisson process, remember um, where our um, with parameter lambda, then we can think of if I'm thinking about arriving, where can I go? I'm thinking about number of arrivals where I can only go from zero to one, I can only go from one to two, I can only go from two to three, etc. So this is what's called our embedded chain. So where can I go from state zero? I can only go to state one. State one, I can only go to state two. So for example, if we have this, where these lambdas represent not probabilities, um, but the rates at which they transition. So here, I'm going to stay in state one. Um, and lambda one represents the, the time I'm going to stay in there, or the rate at which I'm going to stay in there. Then the beta chain, all it is, is it's staying, saying, where am I going to go? So from one, I can only go to two. From two, I can only go to one. So here, from one, I can only go to two. From two, I can only go to one. So next time we're going to talk about an infinitesimal generator matrix and what it is and how all of our different our um, probability, our transition functions and our embedded chain and our infinitesimal generator matrix, how they all kind of work together to tell us about a continuous time Markov chain.